Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy like me. Anyway, like always, I have some interesting photos to discuss today. All of them are old photos, but still very well worth discussing now. The day's analysis is quite different, although the difference is not significant, but it will be more detailed than before. By the way, I apologize if lately I've been making videos about photos related to the occult elite. In my opinion, these photos are very useful to open people's eyes about the dark world that they consume in mass media. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the summer issue of Days Magazine is an interesting photo shoot entitled Season of the Witch. It combines fashion with images from works about occultism, witchcraft, and ceremonial magic. Look at what she is wearing. More telling is this new trend pushed by mass media, associating witchcraft with female empowerment. Indeed, the text under the title states, to reclaim the word witch is to reclaim our right as women to be powerful. Tracing sex, magic, and symbolism of female power distilled. Next to this model, who has a please kill me look on her face, are diagrams taken from various occult works. The article accompanying the photo shoot is basically an infomercial for witchcraft, selling it as a tool for female empowerment. Not unlike Bain C's Lemonade, empowerment is intertwined with the occult elite's philosophy, without actually revealing any of it. The article contains sentences such as, The independence of women is the great strength of witchcraft. I feel like the witch is relevant because women are still mistreated, and, they were powerful women, and there's nothing more scary to a patriarchy than that. Standing in front of a full moon, or prime time for ritual magic, the model wears the drapes of her mom's living room. The article describes the occult symbolism as badass, without going any further. Too bad they do not mention that dabbling with practices such as black magic, spirit invocation, possession and necromancy, can lead to the exact opposite of empowerment. As Manly P. Hall stated, true black magic is performed with the aid of a demoniacal spirit who serves the sorcerer for the length of his earthly life with the understanding that after death, the magician shall become the servant of his own demon. For this reason, a black magician will go to inconceivable ends to prolong his physical life since there is nothing for him beyond the grave. A man will barter his eternal soul for temporal power, and down through the ages, a mysterious process has been evolved which actually enables him to make this exchange. In its various branches, the black heart includes nearly all forms of ceremonial magic, necromancy, witchcraft, sorcery, and vampirism. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Mariah Carey is on the cover of Complex in a photo shoot entitled Eyes Wide Open. Clearly inspired by Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut, I think I've discussed that movie before, the photo shoot implies that Mariah is about to partake into a magic ritual with a bunch of masked men. She is dressed in red, the color of sacrifice and initiation. But, if you are a regular viewer on this channel, you know that the Eyes Wide Shut theme is an overused way of portraying stars as slaves of the industry, who are offered as objects to the faceless elite. In the last image of the photo shoot, Mariah is wearing black, the result of black magic. She is leaning on a book that is most like of occult significance, considering the context of the photo shoot. In short, this photo shoot states that Mariah is still owned by the occult elite. Here she is on the cover of the summer issue of Clash magazine, with one eye hidden. Owned. A few years ago, Mariah reintroduced her fans to her alter ego, Bianca, who wears a black wig. Sensual alter personas, that is basically what beta kitten programming is all about. Speaking of kitten programming, Courtney Stodden bears all of its symptoms. After she married her 50-year-old handler Doug Hutchison while she was 16 years old, Stodden kept displaying odd behavior while being involved in several bizarre incidents. Things are however turning darker. 
A few weeks after her miscarriage, Courtney posted a picture showcasing her newly shaved head. Not unlike Britney Spears in 2008, MK slaves appear to feel the urge to shave their heads when attempting to cope with trauma. Provoking miscarriages is one of the horrific ways MK handles traumatize their slaves. Courtney also continuously wears feline print clothing, which is the visual code to identify beta kitten slaves. I think her handler is calling her, asking her to be surrounded by more feline prints. Rihanna is on the cover of W Magazine, with a massive emphasis on the one eye sign. Created in part by one of the elite's favorite photographers Stephen Klein, Rihanna is the last woman on earth, and the ruling warrior queen in a dark dystopian future. Why does the future always needs to be dystopian? Death and desolation is so fashionable right now. In the entertainment industry's version of the future, the elite always takes over all resources available on Earth, leaving the masses reduced to a state of animals, scrambling around a whole lot of fire, fences and barbed wire. In other words, NWO stuff. Also, Rihanna's keys contain eyes, which may be hint that submitting to the eye is the key out of this crap. As usual, the one-eye sign has been prominently displayed around the world on magazine covers. This is the cover of Bizarre Netherlands. Justin Bieber, with his eternal please don't hit me look, hides one eye on the cover of head. On the shadow cast on his eyes is written, Justin, the comeback king. They don't let you do a comeback unless you're a slave to their system. I.e., one-eye sign. The cover of the May edition of Playboy features a big fat one-eye sign. The new Playboy is all about that agenda. Queen Elizabeth II, on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, with an egg yolk covering one eye. Is this punk? Or a mainstream magazine telling you what the Queen is truly about? The one-eye sign is increasingly featured on a disturbing amount of movie posters. This is a poster for Doctor Strange. This is another poster for Doctor Strange. The movie Criminal is about a convict who is implanted with a dead CIA agent's memories to finish an assignment. This MK Ultra inspired plot is promoted by, of course, a one eye sign. Do dudes? One eye. Warcraft. The poster of the movie High Rise features one eye at the apex of a triangle. More of the elite symbolism right in your face. As usual, a bunch of stars did the one eye sign to remind you that they're pawns. This is Killy Jenner in Paper Magazine. This is Ian Connor on the cover of Exit. This is Iris Apfel. She is an American businesswoman, interior designer, and fashion icon who works for the occult elite. This is Heidi Klum with a very practical one-eyed hat. This pic is from the Ellie Saab Bridal Collection. The model is saying Ui, yes, with the one-eye sign. Is she getting married to someone, or the occult elite? Taylor Swift hides one eye with a bottle of coke that says, we never go out of style. I think they are trying to tell us something. Interestingly enough, the video of the song that was quoted is full of MK imagery. In conclusion, here are random ads from Europe, featuring an unnecessary one-eye sign, proving that they want their symbolism to be everywhere. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.